It's been a few weeks since my discovery of the nuclear spot in the Unistal tunnels right next to the intersection of the dirt road leading into the military proving grounds where we're off limits. I've been looking forward to going back here and look at what was actually here. So of course I invited George and my friends who knows far more about nuclear research and radiation than I do to come help me survey the area. I was also hoping Peter Law would show up with his GPR and scan the grounds for what could be beneath. It's a good day to dig, I guess. It's a little rainy, a little overcast, and I suppose these are the days you really want to go find strange things in the woods. I don't know what's in that hole. I have no bone in the fight that either the Germans did or they didn't. Personally, I believe they had research far more advanced than what mainstream history books have given them credit for, and I am certain that a lot of the wartime secrets are hiding in holes or been buried here and there around the world. I might have found, maybe I found one of those holes. Maybe I didn't. Two things can now happen. Either we find something that's inconclusive, we have to get permits, we have to dig, we have to do more research, or we find something that's actually conclusive. And if we find something, well, we are right on the border of a German military area that during World War II had a lot of cumulus fingerprints all over it, tunnels, slave labor, nuclear research, possible detonation of nuclear tactical weapons. So if we find something, it's going to be World War II, it's going to be German, and it's going to upset a whole lot of historians who wrote mainstream history books about a narrative that then proves to be wrong. I just want to know what the truth is. If I'm wrong, I want to know. As a historian, the greatest moments of my life is when I discover something I thought was, wasn't. When I learn something new, if I learn I was wrong, I think that's amazing because I actually learned something. I don't just confirm what I think I know. So now we will see. And the ramifications of actually finding something, well, that opens up a whole new can of worms. Either we will be allowed to look at it, we'll be allowed to find something that might upset the apple cart or whatever we find will just disappear in the middle of the night like has also happened before and we'll never know what was there. So all we can do now is go there and document it as thoroughly as we can and let the chips fall where they may. I don't see if the guys are here. They came a long ways away. I'm just dying to see what the GPR says. Hell, I'm really excited to see what everybody says because this could be a big deal or it could be a little nothing, but at least we're trying to do something. We're trying to find out. Ah, here's the guys. Yes. <laughs> First interesting development, the gentleman with the GPR is afraid to show up. Apparently somebody got to him or something else. He found the other three things and somebody scared the living crap out of him. That's interesting. It's like I always said, if somebody thinks I'm getting too close to something that the government doesn't want me to know, and military intelligence doesn't want me to know. I'll make the coffee. Come on by, tell me what the problem is. I'm still on the service, and I'll take the hint. So much more fun to not do this alone. Ungefähr hier. Decent sind die Stelle. Here is this. Here is it. Here. Das ist aber nicht die Stelle, die du mir letztens gezeigt hast. 10? 0.1. Du hast das Video gesehen, ne? Ja. 
Wie soll das sein? Ja, in diesem. Ja, ja, ist ja. Genau. Do I have to turn on the video? It, it happened, it happened right here. Hier ein Stück weiter oben, 500 Meter, äh, haben die Russen zu ihrer Zeit äh, äh, kleine Bunker gehabt, die sind auch noch da. Äh, und oben neben den Bunkern standen immer LKWs, die haben große Antennen gehabt, so, so Funkantennen. Ja. Und in den Bunkern haben die ein diensthabendes System gehabt und haben äh, äh, praktisch ja irgendwelche Verbindungen aufrechterhalten. Und es gibt die Behauptung, dass die diese Bunker vor alte deutsche Eingänge gebaut hätten. Und es gibt auch dazu eine Aussage von einem zivilen Bauarbeiter, der gesagt hat, hinter den Stollen, die vorne sind im Jonastal, würden drei Stollen parallel zur Straße durchgehen. Also es könnte durchaus sein, das ist nicht auszuschließen. Ich hatte ein Video von, von, von diesen gemacht, hier, mhm. und es war total... Wie ist das möglich? Oder einer hat das Video gesehen, ist hergefahren, hat gesucht, weg ist es. <lacht> und on und on und auf und on und auf, just to make sure. Und bist du auch no weggegangen, dann war es weniger? Wieder hergekommen. Yeah, the closer I got to the ground, the higher it got. Ja, es kann sein, dass das vielleicht jemand erkannt hat, das Schild und das Schild und dann. This is the weirdest thing. You all saw the Gallic Geiger camera go completely apes it in this area. And you got people who actually know what they're doing. Not even my own is giving off the same response. How's that even possible? I checked that it worked time and time and time again. I verstehe es nicht. Das ist aber 740. Und es langsam, also schnell ab und, und nicht unter 500. Ich habe Bilder davon gemacht, ich habe Video. Hier war es 400. Wann warst du da? Vor wie viel? Zwei Wochen zurück. Ich habe halt alles, alles mit Video gemacht. This is the dumbest, most impossible thing I've ever seen. Complete loss of any signature of anything on any counter. I was here 10 days ago. Even in the pit down the road. I don't get it. This is one of those things I don't understand and I cannot explain. It was only a few hours before we were in Gutov we had all the various detectors with us, the computers. I paired up my uh, Geiger counter to the guys and all the measurements on the machinery matched, was the same, functioning, no problem. And a few hours later, I went through this place in Jonastal. I crisscrossed this section of road and the radiation would start low, it would raise up the more i get to the center of this road corner then it would diminish again walking several directions i turned my geiger counter on and off repeatedly i went through this area several times and you can see here in my schematics where uh, and how the radiation was found on the day i was there No power lines, no nothing here to mess with, uh, with the signal. There's nothing in the trees. If this was a technical malfunction, this is not how it would happen. How would that give me a reading that would continuously diminish or elevate depending on where in the area I was? It doesn't make any sense. I'll be the first one to say that the area around here doesn't look disturbed, but it's been a few weeks 
since I was here and since I announced that I found something that we were coming back to look at. But I don't see any indications. There's something more that I need to look at here. I'm not done with this area. I'm really annoyed that we put all this effort in and then this happened, whatever this is. But I guess it does make sense because every time you look and ask Hold questions, I don't know. things like this seems to just happen. Well, as you can <laughs> tell, oh, here's a piece of is this metal. Metal retains. It's not as high as on the other side, but it's still way higher than background radiation. I'm starting to the point where should I be here? Where the hell? I'm just walking here, 400 meters from the from from the tunnels. This is where they said there was supposed to. Das ein Freund der Familie, Hans Hoffmann, der muss vom Forschungsrat der Deutschen Post gewesen sein, der gesagt hat, geht heute Abend mal auf die auf den, äh, auf den Turm. Die haben ja auch vor Wachsenburg oben gewohnt, die haben das betrieben, na, die Gaststätte. Und guckt mal rüber zum Truppenübungsplatz. Wir machen was Neues. Und wenn das gelingt, gewinnen wir vielleicht einen Krieg noch. Das deutet eben auch darauf hin, dass, wir, dass es da nicht um irgendwelche konventionellen Dinge ging. Ne? Da war es einfach zu spät. Und die sind tatsächlich auf diesen äh, Burgturm hoch und abends, glaube ich, halb zehn oder so, hat sie eine Explosion gesehen. Und die hat die ganz leienhaft beschrieben. Die hat gesagt, ja, das war äh, innen rot und außen gelb und es kam ein großer Wind oder Sturm auf die Burg und sicherlich eine Druckwelle oder sowas. Und... Äh, und hat das ganz, ganz leinhaft beschrieben. Was die allerdings auch gesagt hat, ist, am nächsten Tag äh, wären SS-Ärzte in den Dörfern ringsherum unterwegs gewesen, äh, weil viele Leute Nasenbluten hätten und sowas. Und daraus ist die Geschichte atomar, ex, äh, atomare Explosion gemacht worden. Und äh, was, was man sich sehr gut vorstellen kann, ist, dass der Dietner da so eine Hohlladungsbombe gezündet hat, als Test. Ja, äh, und... Ein, ein dienstverpflichteter Heinz Wachsmuth hat ebenfalls berichtet, dass er am nächsten und übernächsten Tag unter Vollschutz mit SS-Leuten und Häftlingen auf den Platz musste und Scheiterhaufen anlegen musste. Und dort wurden Häftlinge verbrannt. Und so wie er es berichtet hat, muss es da um 600, 700 Häftlinge gegangen sein, die in einem unterschiedlichen Zustand waren. Es gab sogar noch Überlebende ganz am Rand. Da hat also jemand seinen Namen noch gesagt und gesagt, man soll seine Mutter grüßen. Und es gab Leute, die blind waren und die, die berichtet haben, oder der eine hat berichtet, dass einige der, der aufgestellten Häftlinge gar nicht mehr da waren. Andere hatten, weiß ich nicht, schwere Verletzungen, abgerissene Gliedmaßen und viel. Also sowas wurde dann berichtet. Und jetzt können wir sagen, wahrscheinlich haben die Leute aufgestellt, um die Wirkung abhängig vom Abstand zum Epizentrum zu testen. Ne? Als der James Holland da war, hat er mich ja gefragt, äh, ob das so eine Bombe war wie in Hiroshima. Ne? Kann es natürlich nicht gewesen sein, weil dann hätte Clara Werner nicht mehr berichten können, dann hätte die Burg mit <lacht> weggeblasen. Ja? Aber es gibt wirklich zu diesem Ereignis gibt es noch, noch mehr Dokumente. Flerow war sicherlich ein, also ein Wissenschaftler, Physiker, ne? weil er hat, das, hat verstanden, was er da gesprochen hat. Der muss irgendwie hier beteiligt gewesen sein oder er muss jemanden einen Verbindungsmann direkt in diesem Team vom Diebner oder so gehabt haben. Denn er konnte das alles sehr, sehr, sehr genau beschreiben. Also er hat genau beschrieben, wie die Bombe äh, aussah, wie groß die war, dass, wie schwer die war, dass sie auf einem Plattenwagen von SS und Hunden bewacht da auf, dieses, auf diesen Platz gebracht wurde und an einem Gerüst gehangen wurde. Äh, er hat beschrieben, äh, dass eben chemische Ladungen von außen auf einen Kern geknallt sind, um den zu verdichten wahrscheinlich. Ne? Äh, und er äh, er hat auch äh, beschrieben, dass diese Leute da gestorben sind. Also das hat er auch gewusst. Ne? Und der hat ja an Kortschatow berichtet. Kortschatow war der Chef vom Atombombenprogramm der Russen. Und Kortschatow prüft den Bericht auf Plausibilität wahrscheinlich. Ne? Und berichtet dann aber eins zu eins an Stalin und an den Geheimdienstchef. Und ich sag mal, an Stalin berichtet man keinen Scheiß. Ne? Der bläst seine aus wie eine Kerze. Das war doch ein misstrauischer Hund. Ne? Aber... Äh, wenn der sich wagt, das so zu berichten, dann sag ich mal, muss eigentlich auch was dran sein. Na?
in this small, beautiful town of Stad Ilm, not far from Jonasdal by some 10 kilometers, there was once built a monastery. Many, many years ago, it was turned into a school, and then around the time of the Second World War, Kurt Diebner moved in here, took over the school and its very strong, well-built basement, and created a little nuclear lab. To what extent it was of what he had here, none of us was entirely sure, as none of it had been here before, and we were in for a bit of a surprise. So after a very long time of searching, well, we found Deepna's school. You see one of the little cubes behind me? This is where Deepna's nuclear research ended. At the end of the war, he had moved from Komostov from Kutov, and this is where the final research of the German nuclear weapons project was housed in this small little building. And as we walk into this small, unassuming building, in the floor is the hole from a reactor core, just like the one at Heigelok. This we did not expect to see here. I thought this was just a lab. What is interesting is I had absolutely no idea that he actually put a reactor here. I did not know that. I thought he did research here, yes, absolutely. I did not know there was an actual reactor on this site. And you see on the walls you have all the, where you had the power. And above this was the school. We have to find some pictures of this place. Und ganz wie in, in Gotthof. Besides these two basement rooms, there was the entire school building above of several stories that was taken over by Divna's lab. I believe in one of these, there was a generator, diesel generator, located to provide power for the electricity, as this was the case in Heigelok. However, Gerlach had obtained enough electricity promised from the local Gauleiter for experiments to continue. So that would be the connection.
This is the second time in one month I'm standing in one of Divna's reactors. Ich wusste nicht, dass er einen, einen reellen Reaktor hier hatte. Ich dachte nur, dass er einen. Ich habe gedacht, Büro. sie waren nur hier umgezogen und wollten hier weiterarbeiten, aber das ist nicht so eine Weiterarbeit. So, das ist interessant. So, wo, wo, hier, wo ist Ihr Uran dann? Ah, ich kann das nicht. Das ist, das ist glaube ich, eine Weitertransportation nach ins Heiger. So, diesen Uran hat er nachher. Ja, dieser auch. Das Diese auch? Ist, da gibt es eine Dokumentation. Ah, okay. Da gibt es ein interessantes Buch von äh, Günter Nagel. Günter Nagel, das glaube ich von mir. Ja, ich könnte das Geschichte nachher den Link. Ich schicke mir ein, ein, ein Bild davon. So, okay, so am Ende des Krieges war hier keine, keine Uran drin. Aber die letzte Tage dann. Man hat Reste gefunden. Äh, äh, Kraftfindungsbrenner gefunden. Aber woran mag sie nicht? Ich weiß es nicht genau. Das, das, das ist dokumentiert. Nur was ist ungefähr? Das sind da jeden Tag die Radie. Ach, danke. That is exactly what I was going to ask you. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's not that much. I mean, we were at the other reactor, there was nothing. So that's not really strange. Here was no accident. Plenty of ventilation, and you had thick walls. It's perfect for this. So, wo hier kam die Strom? Äh, der, was war der Strom? War da eine Elektrizitätswerke hier in der Nähe rein? Oder? Das ist nicht radioaktiv. So, muss ich umgehen. <lacht> This is so cool. So down here was the gate where they would have brought in whatever they needed. You have this whole archway that is neatly covered with some of the coolest spider web I have seen in civilian life. Here would have been a gate, outside there's a crane, and I could clearly see a little check in here. This is just, and I know these guys use this for storage right now, and that's absolutely fine, as long as they turn it into a museum at some point, because they absolutely have to. This have to be, see all of these. This was dug up, probably a cable duct, I don't know. stuff on and in the walls that people have worked on and again the school was upstairs where the actual research took place this is just Rooms. 
So for the second time in two weeks, I'm standing inside one of Code Deepna's reactors. I'm not glowing in the dark yet, and we did the Geiger tests. There's also very little radiation here. So as I said to the great people of this town, you absolutely have to make a museum here, because a lot of people, they just don't know that in this small town was one of Deepna's wartime nuclear reactors. Nobody knows this. You have to make a museum here. You guys have to come see this, because this is just amazing. Here, Kurt Diebner was going to improve on his reactor from Gotov. He had calculated that hollow uranium spheres would be more efficient than cubes, and he had enough for low temperature experiments. He also had a quantity of heavy water, enough for interim experiments. And a uranium reduction plant was on its way here when the war ended. A few of those have been set up throughout Germany. One more reactor was located at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in an underground bunker. In 1944, the last experiment here, B7, conducted by Karl Witz using ordinary water, not heavy water, and by using a carbon reflector giving higher neutron multiplicity. In January 1945, a half a ton of heavy water and hundreds of uranium cubes left Berlin and arrived here at Stadt Ilm along with Diebner wearing an army uniform. It was clear for a while, but certainly from January, February, that Heisenberg was working to oppose Diebner's attempts to create a bomb. He went to Stadion to see Gellach in order to have all the uranium and heavy water from Berlin sent on to his reactor in Heigloch. Here the power supply for the lab was simply provided by a diesel generator set up in an adjacent room, much the same as I suspect was the case here in Stadion. On April 3rd, Diebner loaded papers, materials, heavy water and uranium on trucks along with those soldiers and scientists who could travel and set out directions south before the Americans arrived a week later. During the Second World War, the Germans had extremely advanced technology and nuclear research programs. There were cyclotrons, betatrons, uranium reduction plants, particle accelerators, and much more, things we still don't know of. And certainly these efforts have been downplayed by mainstream historians and governments ever since. And given the notoriety Heisenberg have received as the one man who's deliberately failed, he have a nice museum built to his anti-Nazi stance up at Heigelock at his reactor site there. While Diebner's reactors go unrecognized, yet it was Diebner's post-war nuclear reactor designs that powered German cargo ships after the war. But Diebner was a party man, and he took a different approach to the nuclear science, and he was trying to make a bomb while it was clear that Heisenberg was actively trying to oppose his efforts. Also, many of the German scientists were still in contact with their counterparts outside of Germany. It is strange that Diebner, who had the armies, the SS, backing by Bormann, Himmler, could not cut through these efforts to hinder his work by somebody like Heisenberg, who was not particularly liked by SS or Himmler. Initially, in 1943, the Army High Command had agreed to release 5,000 scientists from active service for the nuclear research projects. In 1944, Himmler ordered a further 14,600 scientists released for this effort. This was seconded by Göring and Bormann. Speer, however, did not agree, but was obviously overruled. Of course, if Diebner succeeded and Heisenberg was the distraction, it all makes more sense. And given what the Russians found after the war that we know of, one may wonder what the Americans actually did find or had handed over. Given the top leadership, from SS, Himmler, Kamla, Bormann, had all backed this effort, it cannot have been insignificant. And there was a time for Diebner to evacuate materials and for the SS to hide others leaving the door wide open as to what actually happened here. We know at least five and a half tons of uranium cubes were produced during the war that we know of. Diebner's bomb design needed a lot less, and there was nuclear labs producing something during the war that we still have not found or been told of. So, having been frustrated in our attempt this morning, 
found success in the afternoon since George was here to tell us where to get in to the larger tunnel systems. It was time to see what was actually built here. Das, das waren Rohre für die Lüftung. Das waren praktisch die Verbinder hier. Ne? Wurde ein Rohr ans andere gebracht und die, die hingen unter der Decke im Stollen. Ja? Und da hat man den Sprengstaub und sowas wieder rausgezogen. Nicht für die, und die Luft, für die äh, Drückbohr, für die Kompressor. Nee, die ist das, 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 das ist ja Absaugung. Die, ja. Das, ist, das ist Absaugung und die Druckluft für die Bohrer. Das ist da, wo der Parkplatz ja. jetzt ist. Ne, da ist ja eine Kompressionsstation gewesen. Da, da waren acht Kompressoren. Und das Rohr, das ging dann unter der Straße durch. Auch oh, heute noch übrigens, man kann es noch sehen. Und äh, die haben die Druckluft für die Bohrer bereitgestellt. So. Fantastisch. Oh ja, sieht schön aus. Ja, ja, definitiv. Und das ist deine neue Arbeit. Besser wie Back. Da war ich schon oft unten. Nass. Ja, das ist noch dem Leben, ne? Ja, natürlich. Oh ja, ja, ja. 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 Das ist gut. Viel Platz. Platz für Party hier. Und sind auch ein altes Bierflasche. <lacht> Natürlich. <lacht> Und hier sind die, die alte Tür. You're gonna get dirty and wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. it's, it's like limbo. Oh, hit it again. Yeah. It's like limbo. Just keep your head down. <laughs> Just sit on your ass and slide. It's sort of the only way. the party. <laughs> Nicht atomisch, aber Noch mehr. Technisch ist das mein Urlaub. 
Ich habe meinen ganzen Urlaub in unterirdische Stollen gebraucht. Und dann frage ich, warum ich keine Frau habe. <lacht> okay, ehrlich ist nicht eine ehrliche Frage. Ich, ich glaube, ich weiß. Oh. Ah, ja. There's a lot more. Oh, here's some of the railway tracks. Very cool. That's the next tunnel. That's... That's... Bisschen Holz von die for the support. Tobias? <laughs> Hast er liegt? Look at the entire ceiling, and here's the arch. That's one of the arches. That's like so, vielleicht die Russe hat hier ein Teil gesprungen. Diesen hat wir, wo hier besteht. Lebst du noch? Und dafür hat wir keinen Hund mitgebracht. Hey, you are. Aber für Hauptquartier? Hm. Oh, das habe ich nie gesehen. In Marsen, normally the arches are in cement. These looks like bent railway tracks. Don't they? I have never seen that before. It does, except who bent them. <laughs> and there's a, what is that? What was that? So, Ralf, ja. Kannst du dich rausschneiden oder wenn du auf YouTube bist oder am schwarzen Balken? <laughs> Oh, so kein Interview mit dir, sagst du? Uh. <laughs> I, well, stick, stick, stick close to me. I, I have a fairly good projector on this thing. I'll give you a little more. TS? 
That's my initial. Do you know Strohmann? <laughs> in love. Ah, with this, yeah. Somebody in here loves me. <laughs> 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 Probably. So we can actually get all the way to 12 from here. This is really cool. See, I bet you didn't think this is what you were going to be doing today. Oh, I see cement. This was built up. That's not rock, that's cement. It looks like uh, street material. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, on, on these, just, if they did these the same as they did all the other tunnels, then they built the roof first, and then down, and then these would go last. Wow, speaking of the roof. Look at this whole thing. This is the roof that came down. All, all this used to be out there. I guess this is part of the Russian demolition. <laughs> it's always good when we have George on the outside, so if anything goes wrong, at least there's someone who can come get us. <laughs> so if this is the end, then this is 12. Let me just check this side. I think there might be a little, but I don't think so. I think this is a dead end. Yeah. Yeah, this is the dead end. <laughs> the hell is that? Cigarette? No. Beer. 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 Well, that I believe. Yeah, oh. Step. Step oh, yeah, you see the, the sides being built up. Do you have your Geiger counter with you? Is it on? I wonder why the hallways are black. Is it all from smoke and explosion and fire? He. Look at this. Is this detonation cable from when they blew it? No, you need two for explosion, right? It's a no. vintage isolation. So it's newer. Aluminium. Okay. I think this is new. <laughs> oh, I had that problem with this. Especially when you come out in the sun. You get a cold tunnel and then you come out 
in very hot weather. Take your pipe. So this is the ventilation shaft, or the venti one of the ventilation pipes. And tile. I wonder if they had drainage running in here. But they couldn't have, there's no reason to. Turn. <laughs> That's more metal. There was a tunnel in Austria where you go in, <laughs> where you go in some two, three kilometers, and then there's still parts of V2s in there. I see in the video, but I can't find out where it is. It drives me crazy. So you see the picture of something I I must I I must I see him. I'm titled for the ventilation. The guns. Oh, they were ready to blow. The, yeah. For the next explosion. Yeah. Sometimes you find them with explosives still in. But <laughs> it's part of the ventilation. Isn't it? You still have the other light, right? Hast du meine eigene Licht? Oder ja, ja, ja. Oh, gut, gut, gut. Nur so, wir haben mehr als ein und zwei. Stones are created from shells, from marine shells. Ja. Warum schwarz dann? Ist das, ist das vom Feuer oder? Um, maybe. Das ist das nicht normal? Das ist wie, wie das nicht gemalt hat. Ein von die all other tracks. So this is really what's left. Really what's left of one of the old work camps. Oh, what? Somehow I'm glad nobody stole it. I mean it's just nice to see something left from history that's actually still here. Although the people that put it here are probably not happy with it. Light. This actually made the turn. They didn't have a, a turn station. This actually, this actually turned. It's only one rail. It's only one Interesting to see that there's still a little bits of pieces left of construction, air, ventilation, rail. But again, you had all these 26,000 laborers. They built the tunnel. There's more than this. There's way more than this. And even if I couldn't find what I was looking for today, it doesn't mean it's not there. It just means it's not where I was looking today. Oh, here are the other tunnels. 
runs parallel with this. It gives a whole new perspective when you see it. And when you see the maps and the drawings, when you actually hear, it's a whole new... I'm looking at these walls, I think these walls were built up. There's something missing, there's holes in these walls for technical. It looks like asphalt, but these walls were built up more than they are now, obviously. It's not even cold. It's like it was strange, it's not even cold. I don't know why, it's usually about 10 degrees in all of these, but... Ooh. You know, these walls have been built up and cleaned up after the construction. I think this is how the wall would have looked like. And then eventually arches would have come on top. So that one's the one we can see the hole to. So just try this one, try the next one. The next one, huh? The next one? Yeah. I'll take the next one. Yeah, this one ends here too, doesn't it? And that's the hole in the wall. <laughs> See how the sides have been built up? This was built up after construction and that was, I think this is how it would look. That's not good. Yeah. Well, as long as we see him from behind. <laughs> He's unrecognizable. Even from 
Here's, yeah, there is a rail. They really carried the rails all the way up, didn't they? And here's an, another rail. So do you think that's rock or do you think they covered, they, they plated it? This? This. Is that for air or is that, what is that for up there? I see a thing. What is that pipe sticking out of the wall up there? Something sticking out of the wall up there. Yeah. Uh, looks like a piece of. I don't know what this looks like. A piece of not a real. This looks. Like, this is. This is this rebar. This is steel bar. It's bent. I don't know what it is. There's the railway. That rock is slippery. So this is where they don't have enough here. Oh, that looks loose. Oh, I've seen much looser over the past couple of weeks. <laughs> that is. Looks like solid roofing to me. Come with me through Poland one of these days. <laughs> what the hell is this? This is what they built. Why? I mean, this is just, you're right, it looks like street asphalt. This is not what the Germans usually build up with. Usually they, they put up proper cemented walls. This is just. Looks very thin. Or just painted with black painted. paint. Huh? It is painted. Paint. Yes. No, wait a minute. This could also be soot. Reminds me on the one movie. Where had the fall dunk look before then? <laughs> but what is this shit? Oh, Maybe wow, it's yeah. Some kind of light protection. Do you think this was deliberate? I guess we could take a piece and then... This is just weird. I mean, this is not what you usually see uh, German wartime construction. It used to be really good and solid, and this looks almost like a, a cheap fix. Or to figure out what's uh, already uh, fixed to 
Do you know what else it is? It is a cheap and easy way to hide an entrance. If there's an entrance beyond one of these, it's not. No pickaxe. No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Um, this would be a cheap cover-up fix. I just don't see... It's just... It is not what we used to see. It is not Deutsche Qualität. I was just going to say... So glad I'm the one editing this. <laughs> like, all right, we didn't say that. We didn't say this. We didn't say that. <laughs> oh no, this was also not said. But I mean, these walls are just weird. I've never seen anything like this in a German tunnel. Okay, I've never seen anything like this in any. Try this one or skip one? What the hell, let's take the next one. I'm pretty sure at this point we'll find the same in all of them. So this is four. Isn't this where we came in? Yeah, this is where we came in. Maybe. <laughs> Don't remember actually. Well, this looks like this is just it. This looks like it ends here. nice when somebody labels them. I think this ends right here. Whoop. Was that gracious? Did you get that on camera? <laughs> and here was two railways. Here was a track here and a track here. You can still see the indents from the rail uh, supports. that are still pieces of there. Okay. So, is this where we start digging? metal bits and pieces and huh? Platz für da geht es weiter unter diesen for spring light on? Yeah. Okay. Okay.
mushroom? Yes. There's a lot of very interesting species of mushrooms that lives in these tunnels. <laughs> Especially if they're really wet. I think this is one of the pipes where the uh, Drückluft would come to the uh, hammers. They would, they would run all the way through into the other side. It, it's that diameter it could be. I don't think it's plumbing. I don't think we're there yet. But yeah, there were two rails here. Sticking out of the wall. What is that for? A drill? I mean, if there was an explosion in here as well, is that a hole over there as well? It looks like they drilled th holes through the walls. I mean, if there was an explosion in here, then it sort of makes sense that everything is bent a little bit. That was be stuck here. I'm pretty sure it's the next one. This one doesn't look like the one we came in. This is where we came in, isn't it? Oh, fuck what I know. <laughs> it all looks the same. It all looks the same to me at this point. Interesting. Either there or the next one. Is there not a cross tunnel? I think we need to go down to the end of this. I don't know why I think that. Not like every drunken teenager in Amstad and Ordov haven't been here. Slippery rocks. So this, this is, looks like what was sticking out of the wall. Oh, at least there's the cross beam is still here. That's a nice touch. Haven't seen any cross beams like that in any of the other places. And the rail, like I said, there was two. There's one. And then there was one here.
I'm glad you came though. It's a lot more fun to not do alone. <laughs> Normally you're alone at this? Usually. Unless there's somebody who's dumb enough to come with me. <laughs> Rust. But it's under the rubble. So maybe there's more under the rubble. Hold there for the for the air that it once was round. See how this piece, that piece up there, is now laying right there. Wow. Every teenager comes down here with candles and have a date. So romantic. <laughs> yeah, it's not too much paint. But it's okay here, yeah, it's not too much paint. Hmm. Is this wood? Is this wood or is this is an old handle or is it? Yes, yeah, wood. it is wood. But hang on. But there's the core. Hang on. There's a the core. An oversized pencil. I was thinking about if this was explosives, those. Maybe for marking the holes. Crates. Everything's possible. first battery is empty. Oh, <laughs> did you bring more? Yes. Good. <laughs> um, this one battery touched. <laughs> I'll see if I can find Dale. Oh yes, we passed this thing. I remember that. So. I think this is where we came down. I said that three times before, didn't I? Oh, standing on the roof. All this came from above when they were blown up, which means it could be cleared out. sticking up there. That rail line does look a little bigger than the other ones, but not having something to compare it to. Sorry, I need to see where I'm going guys. I must say, this is where we came in. All right, this is officially where we came in. Okay. <laughs> find it, yeah? I know I said it five times now, but this is actually it. Hmm. 
that's interesting. It has a flat roof. There's one thing that's absolutely certain here. They were nowhere near completion. So if you're going to tell me that the locals were installing things in these places, yeah, I'm not buying it. Here are the rails again. It's interesting how they flattened out the roof in the end. They didn't just dig through to blow. That section is completely level. in there. You see that the roof of that is completely flat. is if they were going to build into a one tunnel remember the rails are still two so this must have been continuation just surprising that it's straight all right so we have gone through the first many rows of tunnels down here in Jonestal and there's only one thing that comes to mind we have a lot of credible witness accounts that have delivered everything from radiators to toilets to plumbing, to flooring in these tunnels. Clearly, these were nowhere near completion of whatever they were going to be. So if plumbing and flooring was delivered somewhere, it wasn't here. And these tunnels, you could build these with 500 or 1,000 slave laborers. So what did the other 25,000 do? There's clearly something missing and something is going on here. I can't show you any clearer than this. 26,000 people, you don't need to build this. Okie dokie. It will be interesting to see the list the Russians made of what they took out from here. Ist es nicht, aber interessant. So, so what do you think? It, it's not what you thought you were going to be doing today. It's huge. It's surprising. I, I really like this. Um, I come from radiation, for radiation and found some darkness. <laughs> yeah, this is not what I promised you. Yeah, you, you don't promise too much. <laughs> or how to say. I promise lunch. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes. 
Good. Uh, <laughs> Has George given up on us? God knows I would. I would. I would have. <laughs> All right. So now for the fun part, where we get wet, dirty, and and just mess up the cart even more. Ah, that's just too bad. Safety first. Ah. Always wear a helmet. Why? I have a very hard head. But I have one helmet in the car. Oh, I have one at home. Oh, good, good. See, we're fine. We have helmets. <laughs> well, now you know next time I say, come look at radiation. I bring you, a helmet. You bring <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the only way is get down on your ass. There's no clean way. There, there. Good. Then, you, then you're on your way. Could you try to make it look graceful? I mean, you're on camera. What? The world is looking. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no one ever said we were ballet dancers. Climbing. Uh, Ah, yes. All right. So one of you outside people. There's a handle. Hey guys. Hi hey guys. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> this is the most graceful entrance exit. Okay. All right. The Oranienburg Auerwerke, so instrumental in producing so much uranium and radioactive materials, would eventually fall to the Russians. And since it could not be dismantled by the Americans in time, they decided to bomb it extremely heavily, completely destroying it on March 15th. With heavy casualties and future ramifications, and they're still digging up bombs and unexploded ordnance from the area. What do you do exactly when you walk into an old school building and you find an unknown nuclear reactor from the war sitting in the floor? How can this not be front page history? How can there not be a, a museum, a destination? There is another nuclear reactor in Germany other than the one in Heikeloch, other than the one in Gotho. This one sitting in the school building. I wonder what else was there. If this is as little infrastructure as they needed to do a nuclear reactor, <sighs> there's ups and downs in history. This morning, not finding any radiation again. I have no idea how that's even possible. You all saw the Gallagher counter. How could everything just be gone? I tested the equipment before I went there. And then, well, let's go by and see what building Deepna was working in. And there's a damn nuclear reactor sitting in the floor. Whoa. The most interesting part is to think that there's definitely one more reactor site that we know of that leaves four. And with such a small amount of infrastructure run on a generator, these could have been numerous other places. Plenty of uranium was produced. So I wonder what we'll find in other caves throughout the former life. I hope you enjoy history and military history as much as I love bringing it to you. And if you want to see more of the photos and documents I've used for these episodes, documentation and so on, you can go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out traveling around the world to some of these far-flung locations like 
Vandal and Brown's first test stand behind me, or Deepness nuclear reactor down there, or the Matula line over there, you can donate on PayPal, uh, protection at serviceint.com. It'll be right here, and it is also on lostbattlefields.com. You absolutely don't have to, but I appreciate any help, and I love all you guys for all the support you've shown me, because history is important. We all know that, and I'm going to bring it to you.